Welcome to this video. Continuation of the former video. The mutations themselves prove it are hybrids? According to modern and specialized scientists, mutations do nothing at best and else cause, nothing but, diseases. It is biologically impossible to have so many hybrids without hybridizations. The sheer number of hybrids, one after another probably always coming from the same places does not make sense. When supposing random mutations, there is no reason for successful mutations to happen in such a, improbable, short period of time, especially if it is always in one or very few places, mutations and spontaneous hybridization would not choose the same locations. Besides, both parents of the hybrid should be found as well, and that is not the case. Intermezzo. What modern scientists have to say about mutations is that mutations at best do nothing, and otherwise cause diseases. End of intermezzo. Since the general public reads or hears of and understands what is presented by consensus they are not aware of this modern position of modern scientists, regarding mutations. Being the fittest is very relative. In other words, if Neanderthals were still living, or if we would go back in time some 50,000 years, the Neanderthals would be still alive, and the modern Europeans did not exist yet, and consequently could claim that they, Neanderthals, have 2% of the DNA of the supposed modern humans, we, or that for Europe modern humans, we, do not exist. If the relatively recent turnovers of what we call modern humans, or others since the Neanderthal in their place, did not had worked out well, survived the invasion and next dominating, extincting or absorbing, the Neanderthal, the above pictured situation with Neanderthal dominating 50,000 years ago would have been the same still today. Consequently the actual Neanderthals could have made the same claim, as we modern humans claim right now, that they, the Neanderthal, are the fittest of all humans. So being the fittest is something very relative, certainly not a marker or valid as scientific evidence. What consensus claims is convenient. What consensus claims is what we, the actual humans, want to hear. Amongst others that we, 1. Are the fittest, this is not true. 2. The largest skull and brain, this is not true. 3. Are the smartest, this is at best very relative. In the above cases the Neanderthal also could rightfully claim that they were the modern humans, and not us, there also would be no us, and that the by us supposed modern humans, we, obviously never existed, could be interpreted that we were not fit enough, or were not of any importance in the populating of the planet, and that we, and, or as, all others that did not made it, and did go extinct, are slash were archaic humans. I simply think. 1. Modern humans, some hybrids that came to existence only 4,000 years old, are 1 BM269, had an advantage because they did not bother about sustainability as the other humans and groups they ended up turning over. They were more like genies troops that were hybridized, organized, trained and equipped almost exclusively for warfare and in second place only sideways and probably later to agriculture in order to feed their genie troops. 2. Most if not all of them disposed of fleets of advanced hybrid boats that cycled around ocean gyres to deliver, in in cases return or advance, large amounts, waves, of hybrid warriors, genies, food, logistics and goods. 3. They were immediate and brutal and focused on, sophisticated, warfare and eliminating, turning over, submitting and or absorbing all other, the previous, populations. Depending on the situation, they would kill or submit all males, most probably not considering the age, they possibly would kill the youngest males most, certain, of all, not first, because they were of no immediate use and because soon the invaders would have their own offspring probably with the mothers of the youngest males. Women would be killed too, if the invaders, overturners, were accompanied by or with their women, or had other women at their disposal. The invaders would preserve fertile women in all or most other cases. I apologize for not being able to put this more considering, but as I said they were or could be brutal and in a way only consider their own command and interests. By the way, I am talking about our only ancestors, of the modern humans, of us. All or much of their behavior, killing, would depend on which wave etc. and how useful present populations could be for them at that point. I think that the latest waves of population turnovers were the most strategic and brutal or cold-hearted, with the most direct and indirect killings, because at that point the invaders already could bring their own women, or however you want to describe it. This is explained more in detail in other videos. In certain cases women could have been very active even in pure warfare and even had the leading role, I have only hints of this, no recognized proof. But at the end the resulting overturn is the same, and is a fact. 
At least one of the latest waves was YDNA R1B, Western Europe, and more specifically R1B M269, Atlantic Facade. The Atlantic Facade roughly includes Portugal, Spain and England, and France, and they will later become the conquistadors and colonizers and spread out over pretty much all continents. This is the end of this video. To be continued, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.